What is going on everybody? Thanks for tuning back into the channel. On today's video, we're gonna be talking about three different knots that I use to tie on my baits, attach my fluorocarbon leaders to my braid, and also if you're gonna run straight braid to fish those frogs, or to fish, let's say, a big hook that you're gonna go catfishing with, I'm gonna show you these knots today. These are gonna be super simple. If you're a beginner looking for the most simple type of knots to tie, these are gonna be just for you. All right, guys, so we're gonna be talking about the clinch knot first. That is gonna be a knot that we're gonna to use to attach any type of hook, any type of bait to our regular line. So if you already have your fluorocarbon leader tied on and you're just looking to attach your tube jig or your crankbait or anything like that, that is what the clinch knot is gonna be used for. It's a very simple, easy knot. It's called the fisherman's knot because that's typically the first knot that people learn when they're learning how to fish. All right, so if you're used to tying those overhand knots, just like five or six overhand knots to keep your baits tied on, you're doing it wrong. Hopefully this is gonna make it a lot easier for you and you're not gonna lose as many fish because those overhand knots, they just don't hold up when there's a lot of pressure put on them. And this knot is gonna be even faster to tie than those knots. Okay, and then when it comes to tying your braid straight to your frog, we're gonna learn the Palomar knot. Very, very easy knot to tie. It's even faster than the clinch knot to tie. And you're gonna be able to secure that frog or your catfish bait or whatever bait you're tying directly to your mainline braid. It's gonna stay on nice and tight and it's not gonna slip. Okay, the reason you don't wanna tie a clinch knot for braid is because braid is, it has like wax and stuff in it. It's very, very slick. So it doesn't hold up very well in a clinch knot. It'll just slip right out. So that's why you want to tie a Palomar knot for a straight braid application. And then when it comes time to attach your fluorocarbon leader to your braid, I get a lot of questions. Hey, uh, what's the way that you tie your fluorocarbon leader to your braid? Well, that is gonna be called the surgeon's knot. And you can tell right here, it's just a little bitty knot where we attach those two sections of line together. Uh, and we're gonna break all these down. I'm gonna show you how to do it really, really fast. I'm gonna bring out this high visibility cord. That way you can pick it up a little bit better on the camera. And sometimes for the smaller line, it's not gonna be as clear. So definitely if you have questions, hit me up in that comment section below and I'll definitely uh, go through and try to clarify some stuff if you have questions. But hopefully being able to see it up close with that high vis, you're gonna be able to make out kind of what we're looking at here. Guys, this is gonna be suitable for just about every single application that you're gonna need it for. All right guys, if you like this kind of stuff, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and let's get going with this video. Okay, to get started with the clinch knot, we're gonna use this to symbolize the eye of our hook. I have a thick piece of cordage here just for visual purposes. All you have to do is run the tag end of your line through the eye of the hook. You're gonna pull that back. Give yourself probably, I would say, six to eight inches of tag end to work with. And all we're gonna do is start wrapping the tag end around the main line. And once you get used to this, if you're just out tying your knots on your boat or something like that, all you can, all you have to do is twist your bait and you can get the same amount of twists. Or just starting out, you can actually make those twists by running your tag end across. So for a thicker line like this, just for visual purposes, I'm only going to be able to make about four laps around the line with this one. But once we actually do it on our real fishing line, we're going to do about six to eight turns. So it's three, four. Okay, once you get the amount of laps around that line that you need, you're gonna get this tag end right here and run it back through this little loop that you made with the line. Okay, we got it running back through that loop that we made. And all I'm gonna do is kind of pinch the tag end with this hand that I'm holding the hook in and then I'm gonna grab my main part of the line with this hand. And one thing you wanna note before you actually tighten this down with pretty much any type of line that you're gonna use, you're gonna to want to take your saliva and lubricate this so it doesn't burn the line. Just that friction that you're creating by pulling this tight could potentially burn your line. 
Okay, once you have this held, all you have to do is pretty much pull on this main part of the line. And you can tell me pulling it, I didn't really get it cinched down good. So what you can do is kind of take your thumbnail or your fingernails and kind of push that tight to work it down a little bit tighter. And then all you have to do is give it a few tugs and you're good to go. And you can see how this nice little barrel is created. It looks like a really nice fishing knot. And all you have to do at this point is clip off your tag end. I would leave a half an inch of tag end left. That way if it were to slip any, it gives a little bit more room to kind of keep it in place but you're golden at this point. All right, let's show you on real fishing line how to do this so you can have a better reference. Okay, we have our main line here. We have our extra wide gap hook. All you have to do is pretty much the same thing. We're gonna run the tag in through the eye of the hook. We're gonna pull this back, give ourselves about six to eight inches to work with. Like I said, all you have to do is twist this. And for this thinner line, all we're gonna do is eight turns. And to be honest with you, you really don't even have to count them. If it looks like it's enough turns, you're gonna be good to go. You see how that looks? Like there's quite a few turns on it. Well, I'm gonna keep tension on this, so I just put my finger kind of on that. And... Okay, we went back through that loop. And then, like I said, you wanna lubricate the line, and then you're just gonna pull that tight and then if you need to take your nails to kind of work that closer, you can do that too. All right, and then you could clip your tag end and you're good to go. You can see how nice and neat that knot looks. All right, that is your standard clinch knot. It's going to get 99% of your fishing applications accomplished just by using this knot. All right, folks, the next knot we're gonna dive in talking about is the Palomar knot. This knot is gonna be used to attach any type of bait to your mainline braid. Braid is very slippery, it has wax properties. So if you were to tie that regular clinch knot that we just showed you, that braid is gonna slip out and you're gonna be losing fish all day. So to get started with the Palomar knot, once again, I have the cord. This is gonna symbolize our fish hook here. This is gonna be the eye of the hook. So what you wanna do, is pinch this up. You're gonna run the tag end back about eight to 10 inches, and it's gonna be laying right next to each other. You're gonna pinch up this, that way we can get it through the eye of the hook. You're gonna run it through the eye of the hook. We're gonna put the hook about halfway in between so we have even parts on both sides of the hook. And then at this point, all you're gonna do is tie a regular overhand knot. Okay, you're gonna cinch down that overhand knot. Keep in mind that you want to have enough room for this loop to go around the bottom of the hook or your frog or whatever bait you're trying to tie on. And if you are doing a frog, you can do this the same exact way. And then all you're gonna do is take this loop and go around your hook or your bait or whatever you're trying to tie this on. And you're gonna run that loop kind of parallel to the tag end and the main line back here. And then all you have to do is cinch this tight. Once again, you could lubricate this with your saliva to make sure you're not gonna burn the line and you just pull it tight. You can work, take your fingers and kind of work that down to get it even tighter. We can see that is a nice looking knot right there. And it is a little weird where this is kind of wide, but I didn't really have anything else to uh, use as a visual reference. But this thing is not gonna slip at all. It is rock solid. This is what I use for catfishing. This is what I use for frogging. It just gets the job done. All right, guys, let's show you on a regular piece of fishing line how to do this. Okay, so we have our hook and we have our main line braid. This is 40 pound braid. Remember, all you have to do is take your tag in, kind of run it back, give yourself about 10 inches to work with here. Lay the lines parallel to each other, pinch up, that end, and then we're gonna run that through the eye of the hook. Remember we want our hook sitting about midways down the line here, so we have even parts on both sides. And then you're gonna tie that simple overhand knot.
Okay, once you have your overhand knot, so it's just like tying your shoes, you're going to cinch that down. And then take this loop and go right over the hook. Or if this was your frog, you would go through, go through that loop. Then run that back, kind of parallel to your main line here. And we can cinch that down. Nice and neat Palomar knot. All you'd have to do at this point is clip your tag end and you're good to go. Good to catch some big fish on this. Super easy knot that is not gonna slip on you and you can tie and retie super quick if you were to break off. That's what makes the Palomar knot so awesome. Okay, the last knot is gonna be the most complicated one to tie. This is going to be the surgeon's knot so if you're into running a fluorocarbon leader on your braid, then this is going to be the knot for you. So you have your mainline braid. You want to attach that fluorocarbon leader to it. What we're going to do is overlap these. And I like to use about 10 to 12 inches of overlap here. We're running them parallel to each other. And all you're going to want to do now is create a loop. So I'm creating this loop here. And I can take time to even this out. If I need more room, let's say I don't have enough braid on this side, I can even it out. But you're pinching it right here. And then all you're going to be doing is taking the end that your, your fluorocarbon or your mono is on, because that is going to have to run through this every single time. So you need to cut a length of leader that you're going to be able to run through here. I like to keep it about six to eight foot leader. For this purpose, I'm only doing about a three foot section of the fluorocarbon. But what we're gonna do is loop this through the middle. And you wanna make sure that there's no kinks or anything down here. You want this to look nice and even. So we're gonna go ahead and pull that through. And you can tell the braid came through really quick because it's just a short piece. And then you have your long piece of fluorocarbon. So you wanna make sure this still looks nice and neat. And we're gonna make more loops. For regular line, I like to run about six loops through here. So that was two, three, four, and you can move this around, give yourself a little bit more room. Five, let's only do five for this one since we don't have enough to uh, actually do this for an example. So see how this is nice and neat? That's what you wanna see. That is gonna ensure there's no twists or anything in your line. At this point, all you have to do is grab all four sections of line here. So you have a tag end on both ends and your main line on both ends. And all you're gonna do is pull this tight, very, very slowly. You don't really have to worry about line burning on this one because you're going so slow. You want to go slow to make sure there's no knots or twists getting created here. And then you can work on up and further cinch this down. And once again, you can kind of take your fingernails and kind of work that together. And then you can keep pulling that tight. And then all you would have to do at this point is clip your tag ends on both sides. So you have a short piece of braid on that side, and then you have a short piece of your fluorocarbon leader on this side, and then you are good to go. And you can clip these very short too. You're not gonna have to worry about this slipping out. And there you have it. Look how strong that is. That is not going to break on you. Super, super easy. That is the surgeon's knot. That's going to help you attach that fluorocarbon leader to your braid, and that's going to get the job done for you. All right, guys, I hope you like some of these tips and tricks on how to tie these three different knots. We talked about the clinch knot that is going to help you tie your regular baits onto your regular mono or fluorocarbon lines. Uh, we talked about the Palomar knot, which is awesome to attach your frogs, your heavy hooks or anything like say for catfishing or anything like that is going to help you 
tie your baits onto that braid without it slipping out like it would if you tied the regular clinch knot. And then we showed you the surgeon's knot, which allowed you to attach that fluorocarbon or monofilament leader to your mainline braid. Guys, these are really the only three knots that I use for bass fishing, cat fishing, or any type of fishing. So that's why I wanted to show you today. These are the only three knots, in my opinion, that you're gonna need to get the job done for any type of fishing that you're gonna be doing. Because I even use these for fly fishing. So hopefully after this, you learn some knots that you can use and take out there to become a better fisherman in the future. And guys, if you like this type of stuff, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. We'd be glad to have you. I'll catch you in those next videos.